Good evening once again. We're glad everyone is online with us, and I'm thankful to have this opportunity to speak to you once again. If you've ever heard of C.S. Lewis, you, you might be familiar with this quote I'd like to make reference to, but it comes from his book, Mere Christianity, and it is as follows. Everyone thinks forgiveness is a lovely idea until he has something to forgive. I think we can see a decent line of thinking regarding this concept in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 25. This passage refers to the parable of the unforgiving servant. Our Lord here is teaching that we should be ready and able to, to forgive our brethren as often as they repent and ask for forgiveness. To help illustrate this point, he uses a parable. In Matthew chapter 18, beginning in verse 23, Jesus says, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, who would make a reckoning with his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him that owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not wherewith to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Lord of that servant, being moved with, moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. So we see in this account that the king here, had compassion on his servant, and even went so far as forgiving him this debt. Now, I don't think we could comprehend just how much money that is that this servant owed, but it's a large sum, 10,000 talents. I probably will never have that much money, but either way, the king here was compassionate enough on the servant to forgive him this debt. Now, this attitude of forgiveness is contrasted against the attitude of the servant who later had um, a conversation with a fellow servant. And that account is found in uh, verses 28 through 33 of Matthew 18. It reads as follows. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred shillings, and he laid hold on him. And took him by the throat, saying, Pay what thou owest. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay that which was due. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were exceeding sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord called him unto him and saith unto him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou besoughtest me. Shouldest not thou also have had mercy on thy fellow servant, even as I had mercy on thee? We're talking about a significant amount of money less that this particular servant was owed by his fellow servant. And yet we see two different attitudes of forgiveness from each of these two men. And that's what I'd like to talk about tonight is forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Well, in general, sin is seen as a debt that each and every one of us owe. And forgiveness is considered a release from that debt. It's pardon. According to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, final page 1133 says, quote, forgiveness was not a pagan virtue. The large souled man might disregard offenses in cases where he considered them beneath his notice, but to forgive was considered weak spirited. Even in the Old Testament, man's forgiveness of his fellow man is infrequently mentioned. In every case, the one asking forgiveness is in a position of subserviency and is partitioning for that which he has no just right. 
Now contrast this, this idea with the teachings of Jesus. Again, ISBE, quote, Christ taught that forgiveness is a duty. No limit can be set to the extent of forgiveness, and it must be granted without reserve. Jesus will not admit that there is any wrong so gross nor so often repeated that it is beyond forgiveness. To him, an unforgiving spirit is one of the most heinous of sins. This natural pagan spirit of implacability, Jesus sought to displace by a generous, forgiving spirit. His answer to Peter that one should forgive not merely seven times in a day, but 70 times seven, not only shows that he thought of no limit to one's forgiveness, but that the principle of forgiveness could not be reduced to a definite formula. Now consider the aspect of this that I would say many decide to leave out today. Again, ISBE. Jesus recognized that there are conditions to be fulfilled before forgiveness can be granted. Forgiveness is part of a mutual relationship. The other part is the repentance of the offender. God does not forgive without repentance, nor is it required of man. The effect of forgiveness is to restore to its former state the relationship which was broken by sin. Such a restoration requires the cooperation of both parties. There must be both a granting and an acceptance of the forgiveness. Sincere, deep-felt sorrow for the wrong which works repentance is the condition of mind which ensures the acceptance of the forgiveness. Hence, Jesus commands forgiveness when the offender turns again, saying, I repent. Now, having a readiness to forgive is considered a Christian duty. Forgiveness, though, is conditional, and it is based upon those who are willing to repent of the wrongdoing itself. Secondly, how do we obtain forgiveness? Among mankind, it is individually, simply repenting and apologizing to any and all who we have done wrong to, accepting forgiveness from those we wrong and sin against. How do we obtain forgiveness from God? Due to the perfect life that Jesus lived, we see that God, the Father, exalted him. This resulted in repentance and forgiveness being extended to first Israel, but ultimately all mankind. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. And we see that forgiveness for mankind is made possible by the sacrifice of Jesus. His shed blood for, the, for us on the cross. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. And Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, which reads, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins." Forgiveness is extended to all of mankind through sound preaching. We find in Acts chapter 13, verses 38 and 39, the following. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. It is by the gospel of Christ that we are taught about God's forgiveness. It is through the gospel of Christ and not the law of Moses that forgiveness is extended to mankind, complete forgiveness. Sound preaching and teaching of that gospel is how we are exposed to that uh, forgiveness of God. And it is our individual obedience to that gospel which secures our forgiveness before God Almighty. This is done initially by one becoming a Christian, which is done by belief in Christ as the Son of God, one's repentance of sins, that one's confession of the deity of Christ doing so publicly, and that individual being baptized in water for the remission of sins. 
At that point, that individual has contacted the soul-saving blood of Jesus, our Savior, and is thus forgiven of all sin. And then, going beyond that, remaining obedient to the gospel of Christ, even if it requires our death, secures our eternal forgiveness. And third, why do we need forgiveness? Man needs forgiveness because we are condemned already. I have heard a few times that it is the gospel that saves us, but folks that are in deepest, darkest jungles don't have to worry about it because they've never been exposed to the gospel. Therefore, they're already saved. They're in a special class of, of individual because they've never had the opportunity to, to hear God's gospel. Well, if that were the case, then the Great Commission makes no sense because if we're supposed to teach God's word in our going, we condemn people by teaching them the gospel and they don't obey. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The fact is that all men everywhere, once they reach the age of accountability, when they are able to understand what good is and even what wrong is, sin, they stand guilty before God. Every accountable person stands guilty before God. We are born pure, yet through our own faculties, we choose to sin against God Almighty. Because of this, we deserve eternal punishment. Jesus makes it clear that we are condemned already in John chapter 3, verses 18 through 20. And it, it was his mission to bring forgiveness of sins to the earth, and he accomplished that mission. We need forgiveness so we might turn from darkness into light. Acts chapter 26, verses 16 through 18. It says there, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have prepared unto thee for this purpose. This is Paul retelling his conversion account. It says to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That is our Lord speaking. Upon receiving forgiveness of sins, when one has complied with the terms of pardon, they also receive an inheritance. This obviously is our heavenly reward when this life in the flesh is over. We also need forgiveness so that we might properly fear God. Psalm 130 verses 3 and 4 reads, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. Because forgiveness comes from God, man should, ought to fear God. Now, this is not terror or dread. However, this is proper respect and reverence for God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 and 29, it reads, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Why? For our God is a consuming fire. We need forgiveness in order to escape final punishment. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 30 and 31, keeping in mind, in mind verse 29 of what, which we just read, for we know him that hath said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All men everywhere will give an account of what they've done in this life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 through 11. It there says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, 
that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Because we know these terrible facts, it should push us to keep ourselves faithful to God, but also to persuade and warn others of this impending doom for all those who are rebellious, those who would seek to rebel against God. <clears throat> now, continuing and really wrapping up the parable which we've referenced, and in closing, our Lord finished this parable in verse 34 and 35 of Matthew chapter 18 by the following. It says, And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due. So shall also my heavenly Father do unto you, if ye forgive not every one his brother from your hearts. So we see that forgiveness is a gift of God. It has been offered to mankind by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, his son. It is accepted every time an individual obeys the gospel of Christ. Forgiveness, once obtained, restores man's relationship with God, hence why it's called the gospel of reconciliation. We become free of the guilt of sin once again, and we become free of the eternal consequences of sin. It is also expected of Christians to have a mindset, an attitude, to be ready to forgive when our brethren ask of it. Though sometimes difficult, forgiveness is indeed a lovely idea. Now, this was not meant to be a, a too far in depth of a study, but I certainly hope it has been a profitable one. I appreciate your attention. I will now conclude.